So I'm here with John Stessinger, who heads up the Enterprise Architecture Function uh, for Atos Consulting. Uh, and there are several papers John's written, um, which can be found on nextpracticeadvisory.com. Uh, and one of them that particularly caught my attention was the, the concept of a, a business running two value chains and how uh, the ICT function hopes to support, automate, uh, and uh, generally make, make run better uh, those two value chains. Um, one uh, reflected the way that the business works and, and brings value, and the other um, reflects the way um, information is, is derived and reported on. I don't know if that describes the two value chains uh, well enough, John. Yes, it does. Um, so uh, the two value chains is a very, very important concept, uh, and here we have a reference architecture for each of them. So the first value chain is the one that uh, integrates the actual value chain of the organization. Um, so if you've seen the talk on front, middle, back, you know that we believe that no matter what value chain you're uh, automating, the uh, information systems are going to cluster around a front, a middle, and a back office. Value chain, presumably that the business would understand. Yes. The, 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 usually the business has no problem with it. Uh, IT probably has more of a problem with it because they're not used to thinking of what they do in terms of the business meaning of, of, of what's going on. And is there another, another um, a facet of this kind of business value chain, if I can call it that, um, has the concept of things heading in two different directions? Yeah, you know, the value chain it, it is always made of a supply chain and a demand chain. And, and the idea is that you know, the, the supply runs one way and the demand runs the other, and they run over the same chain. And actually, it works much better in uh, IT front, middle, back than it does in the Michael Porter manufacturing chain. Because, in fact, although inbound out and outbound logistics work that way, uh, sales and service don't. So this actually is a, actually a purer value chain than, than the one you see in manufacturing. But with respect to Mr. Porter, let's call it a build. A build, Porter obviously. Uh, and the other thing that was interesting, when, when we discovered this uh, view of the value chain, the IT view of the value chain, we thought it was just for businesses that sold information, you know, like, like banks or Dun & Bradstreet. Um, we, we didn't think it necessarily would apply to manufacturing or logistics, but actually it does. We've, we've done this for several manufacturing logistics firms now, and it's just as applicable to them. Uh, and that's because, you know, inevitably, their events have non-economic events, economic events, and economic finance and not resource events. So it actually fits them perfectly too. So it's pretty clear. Most businesses run with demand, people wanting stuff, mm. and a supply, them providing stuff yes. to the people who want it. That's quite an easy concept to understand, and that could be described as the business value chain. Your, your, your paper also makes reference to a, a, a value chain also running at the same time. Yes. So the, the, the way we implement the, the, value, the business value chain in IT is through business events. But it turns out the business events are also the raw material of information products. So if you want to uh, provide a, an information product, either to your management, like management information for decision support, uh, or to your operational systems who need to know uh, certain aggregated data. Um, uh, for, exa for example, in insurance, uh, you, if you're doing asset management, you, you need to create a fund value, right? and that's an information product. Um, in banking, you need to create um, new balances, and that's an information product. Um, and then you can also supply information products to your customers. So if you want to buy a book at Amazon, they supply you tons of information about books uh, before you make your sale. They also provide you with tons of information about what you might want to buy next. Yes, so they do pre- and post-trade reporting, just like capital markets. It's very interesting. So in terms of products, there are two types in, in, in your model. One, the stuff that the company trades in, the organisation trades in, or even could be a government department yes. which trades in collecting tax or uh, giving out benefits. Do or, with information. Exactly. And then in parallel to that, supporting that, there are information products as well, which yes. is supported by this information value chain, if you like. Yes. And there are certain companies who rely on other people's business events to create their own information products. So, for example, people um, looking for credit ratings of yes. companies, for example, or individuals. All the credit rating companies, they buy in the transactions and use that to create um, credit rating reports, which are information products. Similarly, in wealth management, you, they buy in the transactions to provide uh, wealth management you know, products to their customers, which are information products. 
So what we have at Atos is two reference architectures. A reference architecture for doing the real value chain, which is an integration of reference architecture. Uh, the aim there is to get to as high a straight through percentage as possible so that your value chain runs at the lowest possible cost and the highest possible rate. Uh, and then the second um, reference architecture is how to use exactly the same events that run the real value chain to create your information products. So in this world, it would seem that IT systems are there to capture and presumably, to some extent, automate business events. Absolutely. And a business event is anything that happens in the business that someone needs to or might in the future need to know about. Exactly. And the information value chain uh, collates the business events and reports them back in meaningful ways. It creates content out of the business events. Um, so one business event might be um, content in a thousand information products. So, and in fact, you know, what I used to say to customers was, if I buy a tin of beans in the supermarket, that's worth a few p to the supermarket. The information that I bought that tin of beans can be aggregated into millions of information products. So eventually the information that I bought the tin of beans is more valuable than the tin of beans. So that's quite interesting. So if I've got a nectar card, Every time I buy a tin of beans, I get one micro pence taken off my bill. So what the people running Nectar have attributed is a value to the piece of information that they've got from me, uh, and they obviously realise or have calculated that the, that information is more valuable than the micro p that they're giving me off my next tin of baked beans. Absolutely. How do they make that calculation? Uh, well, the supermarkets... You know, they invented this kind of analytic data warehousing, and they've been doing it for years. So um, they know that the more they know about their people using their supermarkets, their customers, the more money they can make from them, either by targeting the goods or by organizing supermarkets in the right way. Or doing the Amazon thing, which says, you bought this book, did yes. you know this author yes. has other written other books, which people like you yeah. like. Yeah, it's almost like targeted advertising. Yeah, which is incredibly effective, actually, as long as it's done in a way that's not irritating. Yes. So I think this, this um, uh, division between real products, what a better word, information products, is, is absolutely uh, fascinating. And the, and the fact that you think it maps onto two different value chains uh, also makes a, a, an awful lot of sense. Yeah, um, it's a three-stage three value chain for the real events and a five-stage value chain for the information products. And just, just quickly, what, what, what are those stages? So it's front, middle, back for uh, obviously for the um, uh, real value chain, and for the information value chain, it's five stages. And in fact, uh, they were published in the Harvard Business Review in 1995 by Ray Port and Siocla. I just use their model. Uh, so the, we gather and organise the business events. That's the supply side. Then we make them selectable. That's the data warehouse on the demand side. We synthesise them. That's the reporting capability, and then distribute them. So it does sound very much like that describes an architecture which can be satisfied by data warehouse type implementation. Absolutely, yes. And that tends to be what you advocate. But, but I don't like calling it data warehouse, I like calling it the information value chain. <laughs> Hence the subject of the talk. Uh, John, I, I, I'll direct people to nextpracticeadvisory.com for more diagrams which, uh, which describe this quite elegantly. Uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you.